Hi friends, I'm Nicholas Acciani. Let's talk backstage. <laughs> this video is all about the basics of what rigging is and some of the terms you need to know about fly systems and how they work in the theater. So let's start with what is rigging. Rigging is the general term for arrangements of hardware and systems for the raising, lowering, and suspending of scenery, properties, lighting, and similar loads. In addition to theater, sailing uses a lot of the same terms and knots. You've probably heard them if you've ever been around boats or seen any of the Pirates movies or any movie that includes sailing. The ideas are very much the same and share a lot from one another. In fact, I think most of theater rigging came from sailing rigging, if I'm not mistaken. I might be. I make mistakes. Theater rigging just happens to hoist more than just sails. Great. What are fly systems? According to Wikipedia, which is a great place to start and get basic definitions, it's not a great place to get all of your information, but as a starting place, it's great. So according to Wikipedia, a fly system in theater is a system of ropes, lines, blocks, which are pulleys, counterweights, and related devices within a theater that enables a stage crew to fly or hoist quickly, quietly, and safely components such as curtains, lights, scenery, stage effects and sometimes people. So whenever we say something flies in theater, we mean it's attached to some sort of rope or cable and is being lifted or hoisted off of the ground. There are two systems we talk about when we talk about rigging. There's hemp or rope systems and counterweight systems. First, let's talk about hemp rigging. It's our simplest and oldest form of rigging in theater. This is directly coming from that sailing rigging, and it's also known as rope or rope line systems because it's not just hemp. Hemp is just what it started as, so that's where we got the name. The counterweight system is a system of rigging in which the onstage load weighted evenly offstage. The biggest difference between this counterweight system and the hemp or rope system is that while a hemp system can have an offstage weight to help with the load, it doesn't have to have one, nor does that weight have to be even to what's on stage. For a counterweight system to work, the weights must be distributed evenly on both sides. A rigger, that is someone who rigs or puts these systems together and or operates the ropes and fly system. When we talk about the rope itself, we have the hauling end, and then we have the hand line, which is the rope that the rigger pulls to operate the counter system. Then there is the load, which is whatever object is actually being lifted. That can be a curtain, that can be a set piece, anything that gets lifted off the ground, which means the end of the rope that that is attached to is the load end. As for the system itself, we have the batten, which is a pipe or wood rail attached to two or more lines of a rigging system and is used to attach a load to something like a curtain or flats. The batten helps spread the weight across an entire section of the stage rather than just one point. You have counterweights. These are cast iron steel or formerly lead weights. These are placed on the arbor to balance the load on the batten. When used in the hemp system, they might simply just be tied off to the hauling end to help offset the weight on stage. They could be a sandbag. It doesn't necessarily have to be an iron weight when we are talking about the hemp system. Now I said the word arbor. This is part of the counterweight system that holds the counterweights. These are usually on a vertical track system that is there to guide them so they don't swing wildly around. And those rails are called T-barred guide rails. And all that is located by the loading bridge or loading gallery, which is a platform used for loading or unloading the counterweights on and off of the arbor. So that's our two ends. What about the journey the line takes? I mean, according to all philosophers out there, it's the journey that really matters, right? Not the destination. So along this journey, we have what is called a block, which is a pulley. A pulley, for those who don't know, is a wheel with a groove rim around it, which a cord passes through. It acts to change the direction of the force applied to the cord and is pretty much used typically in combination with others to raise heavy weights. Inside the pulley, you have a sheave, which is that grooved wheel that the line actually goes through. You can have multi-sheave blocks. So it's one pulley that has a bunch of sheaves inside of it. We can have a bunch of different types of blocks in one system. So we kind of separate them by calling them different things. There's the head block, which is the first pulley the rope travels through when it leaves the rigger's hands. Then you have the loft block, which is the pulley the rope passes through that is directly above the load. That's a part of every system. And to help remember that, the difference between the head and the loft is think head over human, loft over load. Normally, all these blocks are part of a pre-built system that's in a bunch of set locations in the theater. But that's not always the case. Anywhere that you can put a pulley, you can set up a rigging system. So when you create a special system like that, you have what's called a spot block, which is a loft block that can be easily moved and can be spotted or placed anywhere in the grid. You also have what's called a mule block, which is a pulley or a ring, anything that the line passes through that is not weight bearing. This allows the rope to pass through it without touching any other rigging and it kind of keeps that all clean when you have a bunch of systems going all at once. You have what's called a tension block, which is a pulley that's on the stage floor or the bottom of a rigging system that allows for tension. This is in counterweight systems and what makes them 
them actually work and able to not cause a bunch of dangerous problems. Finally, there are arbor blocks. These are pulleys on the top or the bottom of an arbor, which is specific to a counterweight system. Now, what is all that attached to? That all attaches to the grid, which is a series of metal pipes on the stage that we attach lights to, curtains to, and any rigging. It's generally a fixed thing that all of these pipes are attached to. Too. Now, what happens when you've lifted something up and you want to walk away? I mean, you're not going to stand there for the entire show just holding it. You need a tie-off point, which is somewhere that you can knot the rope to keep the load from falling. This is usually located where the rigger is, since they're going to be the ones tying off and securing the line. And a lot of times, you'll have a bunch of these located in one row, and this is called a rail. It's a horizontal bar that's located at the hauling end to tie off or lock the line. You might have a series of tie-off points. One of these tie-off points is called a clear. A cleat is a simple single tie-off for the hauling end of a hemp system. You've probably seen these if you've ever been on a dock. They're all over boats. They look kind of like bullhorns. Now in that same idea, you can have vertical pins in the wood along a rail, which is called a pin rail. And these pins, which are just basically heavy duty wooden or metal dowels, are used very similar to tying off the cleat, and they are very common in hemp systems in a theater. In a counterweight system, the lines are pretty much in a loop, so you can't simply tie off the line, which gives us a lock rail. It's a specific mechanism to these counterweight systems that holds the rope in place and locking it so that the line sets don't move on their own. Now when we talk about a line set, that is one specific batten. Now you might have several going up and down in a theater, so you can do a bunch of different curtains going up and down, and each one will be numbered so you know which line set each set piece is on. So that was a lot of information, but it's all the basic vocab that you need to know in terms of theater rigging and fly systems. There are many terms that I didn't mention here because they are more specific to certain rigging of set pieces or drapery that would be better suited in their own lessons or video, which I will get to at some point. If there are any of these terms that are different where you work, maybe in a different country, or if there is something you think I should have included, but I didn't, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. At the end of the day, I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Bye friends. These videos are made for educational purposes. Hopefully you learned something or it reinforced something you may already know. Now, this is just one way to do this and there may be other ways to do what I've explained in this video. And I would love to hear about those ways in the comments. Just remember, Remember to be kind as you share your own experiences and expertise on the subject. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and hit that little bell button to be notified of the next video.